What's up guys? A couple of weeks ago, I built a beast of a computer. It was primarily used for video editing, a couple of 3D rendering stuff that I like to do, and casual gaming. I put it up against the 6 and 8 core Mac Pro from Apple. If you guys did not watch that video, it will be the very first link down below and I highly encourage you guys to do so. But I wanted to do something different. I wanted to build a mini ITX computer, keep that form factor really small, and see how much power I can squeeze out of it. I'm gonna be using the latest architecture from Intel Haswell using a Core i7 processor, and I wanna see how it fares against my beast of a computer, we'll call it the Black Beast, and also the six and eight core Mac Pro. So without further ado, let's get started. Now before I begin, I did want to document the whole entire build process for you guys. I wanted to show you how to build a computer step by step of the way, and I know some of you guys already know how to do that, but for those of you that didn't, I just kind of want to do a video showing every step on building a computer. Unfortunately, I had some problems with footage, I was messing around, I lost it, so I'm not going to be able to show you that type of footage, which I wish I could. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run by the parts that I chose and of course what you guys wanna see is the benchmarks, how it compares to my current beast of a computer, well, again, we'll call it the Black Beast and the six and eight core Mac Pro. So let's begin with the parts list. I wanted to do a no compromise build. In other words, I wanted to be able to squeeze as much power in there as possible without having to compromise on the components. So what I mean by that is, I chose the Corsair 250D case, and the reason being that is that I can pick a full-size graphics card, I can use just about any power supply, again, no compromise build. I'm able to squeeze everything I can, including if I wanted to do water cooling, which I did a liquid, or a closed loop liquid cooling system, the H100i, which I'll talk about in a little, uh, little bit later. In case you're wondering how small this computer is, here's my Nexus 5 next to the Corsair 250D, just to give you guys a comparison of size. Pretty small, right? Another thing that I really like about the Corsair 250D is the ability to have plenty of storage. It has two two and a half inch drive bays and two three and a half inch drive bays. So essentially I can run two SSDs and two three and a half inch disk drives to have over 10 terabytes of storage. That really can be said about the new Mac Pro. There is no room for internal storage and everything has to be tethered. Now in terms of motherboard, motherboard I chose the Republic of Gamers made by ASUS Maximus 6 Impact Motherboard. It is probably, in my opinion, one of the best mini ITX uh, motherboards you can buy today. I really like the dedicated onboard uh, audio card that it has. It has a lot of really great features and it's of course up to date with the latest Intel architecture known as Haswell. Speaking of Haswell, we are using the 4770K, which is the probably best quad core you can buy off of the Haswell chipset. And cooling that bad boy, we're gonna be using the H100 by Corsair. So we're gonna be using liquid cooling. Going back to that 250D case, you have that room to do liquid cooling, or in this case, we're using a closed loop system. Now the motherboard supports up to 16 gigs of RAM, and we definitely wanted to max that out, and I chose nothing but the best of Corsair, which is their Dominator Platinum. It is a beautiful looking RAM. 1866 should be plenty of juice to get me exactly the performance that I'm looking for. In terms of graphics performance, we're gonna be looking at the GTX 780 Ti. It is the best single GPU available today, which will probably change soon in a couple of weeks, but as of filming this video today, it is the best single GPU. And to power everything, all of these components, we're looking at the AX760 by Corsair. This power supply is very quiet. But what I like about it, it is that it's small enough to fit in this case without any issues. Of course, we could have gone with a bigger one, but most importantly, it is enough juice to be able to handle everything that we have here as part of our parts list. Now, I'm not gonna be using two SSDs. As of right now, I'm just gonna be popping in one Corsair, and this is the Force GS. It's a 128 gigabyte drive, and primarily I'm gonna be using it just to boot up, put in the operating system, a couple of applications, everything's gonna be thrown into my other three and a half inch drive. It is a three terabyte Seagate, and I have plenty of room to 
expand in the future if I wanted to by adding another drive, not only as an SSD or also on a three and a half inch drive too. Last but not least, I have a Blu-ray drive that I just decided to throw in there. I bought it at Black Friday for about like 30 bucks. So it was a really good deal and I decided to just incorporate it since I already had it there. I'm gonna leave the parts list down below so if you guys wanna see all of the components, how much they'd cost. To give you an idea, you can build this computer right now for under two grand. And that's really the price point where I wanted to keep everything inexpensive using high-end performance parts and see how much power we can squeeze out of it. So let's go ahead and dive into the benchmarks and see how it compares to the Black Beast, the six and eight core Mac Pro. Let's go ahead and run the first benchmark, which is Geekbench 3 64 bit, which will give us a single core and multi-core score. Now the Mini Beast, we'll call it the Mini Beast. The single core, we got 3,770. And for our multi-core, we got 14,839. So how does this compare to the other computers like the six eight core Mac Pro and my previous build? Now, if you're just tuning in and didn't watch those other videos, just so you know, MKBHD had the eight core, TLD had the six core, and I'm gonna reference the Black Beast as my previous computer. Let me show you the results. For the single core side, no surprise, the Mini Beast was actually pretty good at 3,770, beating out the current Mac Pro lineup. Didn't get far enough though to beat the Black Beast at 3,959. However, on the multi-core, it did suffer and it was expected. You gotta understand this is a quad-core CPU compared to the six and eight-core setups on the other computers. Moving on to Nova Bench. Now in this benchmark, the Mini Beast was able to muster up a score of 2,553. Now, when you compare it to the other computers out there, and unfortunately TLD did not run the setup or this benchmark, we were able to see that the Mini Beast actually outperformed an eight core Mac Pro. Now this is an older benchmark, so take it for what it is. Now moving on to Cinebench, which I think is a little bit more of an updated program, which is gonna test the graphics performance and also the CPU side. On the Graphics performance, the OpenGL, I was actually blown away at the results at 143.23. Compared that to the other computers that we ran these benchmarks, you can see that this is something interesting because the Mini Beast is using a GTX 780 Ti, which is the same GPU that I had on my Black Beast, but it didn't rank as high. So for whatever it is, whether it's something to do with drivers or because I'm using uh, the latest architecture, it had a really great number. It was pretty outstanding compared to my Black Beast or even the Mac Pros. So it's pretty interesting the, to see those type of results. Now moving on to the CPU side of things, the Mini Beast was able to get 789 CB points. But how does that compare to the other computers? Well, let's take a look. 961 at the six core Mac Pro, 1,223 at the eight core being the best, and right behind that is the Black B. So pretty good results overall. Again, this is a quad core setup compared to the six and eight core from the other computers. Now, I'm not apologizing for it. I'm just letting you know this is why some of these results might be a little bit smaller, but still, it's pretty up to par compared to the other uh, computers out there. Now, the disk speed test. One thing, I am not running RAID 0. This is straight SSD, one single SSD performance. On the read speeds, we're getting 473 max and 492 writes for max. Now, of course, the other computers are definitely gonna decimate this because you have a PCIe on the Mac Pros and on my Black Beast, I was running RAID 0. So not to say you can't run RAID 0. Remember, you have two two and a half inch drive bays on the Corsair 250D. So essentially, you could run two SSDs in RAID 0 and get similar performance like you saw with the other computers. Just a little FYI. So again, take it for what it's worth. I'm only running one SSD as is, but if I really wanted to get that extra performance in terms of write and read speeds, I can just do a RAID 0 and pretty much be on par. For this next benchmark, we'll be doing the Luxmark 2.0 for Windows and 2.1 for the Mac side. Now this is where I've said it before, this is an OpenCL test, so the Mac Pro should really shine here. Now the Mini Beast was able to muster up an impressive 3,007 K rays a second compared to 
TLD's 3194, which is a six core Mac Pro, and MKBHD's 4376, which is an eight core, but one thing to note here on the Black Beast, in case you didn't watch that video, that score reflects only the GPU side. I didn't properly install the drivers on the CPU to do the OpenCL, which I've done already, and I can tell you it's over 4,000, so it's right up on par with the eight core Mac Pro. But interesting enough here is to see how close it was to the six core Mac Pro in terms of performance and OpenCL benchmarking. Unigen Valley 1.0, this is more of a gaming graphics benchmark per se. And the Mini Beast was able to muster up 112 with that GTX 780 Ti, 114 for the Black Beast being still on top, and the six and eight core Mac Pro, eight core at 72 frames per second, and the six core with the lower end of a GPU, 29 frames per second. And next we have the price point. And this is really important because how much performance are you getting per dollar? And I think we can see here the big difference between the mini beast compared to the, which is the most inexpensive computer here compared to the eight core uh, Mac Pro, which is over eight grand. So the mini beast is under two grand and the eight core is over eight grand. So big difference here in terms of price. And then you have the, Black Beast, which is sort of like the middle ground of both. So now benchmarks aside, because I know some of you out there might think, well, these are just benchmarks. I mean, do what, what do they really mean? I've used every single one of the computers. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of lying to you. I haven't used a six core, I haven't used an eight core, but I have used a 12 core Mac Pro for a couple of hours actually, a buddy of mine actually owns one. And I can tell you using all of these computers, the best of Apple, my Black Beast and the Mini Beast, I can tell you that there is a significant difference in all of them depending on what type of applications you plan to run. If you're doing day-to-day -day stuff like web browsing, some you know light video editing, and what do I mean by light is you know using 1080p, including even some 4K content, um, not applying a whole bunch of filters and stuff, but the Mini Beast is a great computer. Matter of fact, I felt that the Mini Beast overall in general just to do the day-to-day -day stuff was a lot quicker than all of my all of the computers including my black beast now if you're looking to do more of you know graphic video editing 3d work and you're just wanting the ultimate performance you can go with the 12 core mac pro and you're definitely going to see the speed uh improvement however you're going to pay a hefty dollar for that I'd recommend more of what I did with the black beast I custom built my own computer I know some of you out there are saying well they're you know it's not workstation components, but you can got, you guys can go ahead and put workstation components. Again, it's based on your needs. So on my needs, I didn't need a workstation graphics card. Those graphics cards, those two GTX 780 Ti's run great on Adobe Premiere. Everything that I use, the applications that I run with it, it runs perfect. So what is the purpose of all this? And you know, there's really no purpose. It's just a fun experiment to see how much money you're gonna spend and how much performance you're gonna get out of it. It's a fun test in case you're looking to build a computer, you can see some sort of benchmarks and give you an idea of what to expect. If I had to do it all over again and start from scratch, I'd probably go with the mini ITX build. However, there's one thing that I didn't say and that is that Intel has already announced a six and eight core processor for their uh, upcoming third or fourth uh, quarter release. So that's something that's gonna be very interesting to see. Also, they're uh, talking about a Xeon processor that's gonna be a 15 core setup. Woo, that's mind blowing. So remember the Mac Pro, the Black Beast are based off of an older architecture, which you could say is, I don't wanna say it's outdated, but it's not current like the, the Haswell build. So anyhow guys, I know there's a lot of information there, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take it for what it is. It's a fun video. I wanted you guys to see comparisons in case you're looking to build a computer and see what you guys can expect. I like the form factor of the mini ITX. It's really small, it's portable. Not as small and portable as the Mac Pro, but enough so that I can just hold it with one hand. It's enough so that it's not heavy to lift and I can take it anywhere I want and it still gives me enough power to do what I want and I think that's the important thing is that you can build a small computer and have really awesome power. And I guess that's the purpose of the video. Until next time, adios.